What is going on, everybody? It is David Palmer, the Leo King. It's been a minute. Or it feels like an eternity. But we are back here live. Thank you so much for being here on my Facebook Live, on my weekly show where I like to talk about what the hell is going on, you know, and try and give some clarity. Some weeks it's uh, super awesome. Some weeks it's like, okay, how do we get through this craziness? And I think that uh, it's been that ladder lately. How do we get through this craziness, right? It's a little bit of that craziness. Now, if you've never been with me live on my Facebook, I am live actually in the chat room right now here on my iPhone saying what up, checking and seeing uh, what is going on with everyone. So what up, yo, yo, yo. I am here to help everybody try and figure out what the hell's been going on because, you know, uh, even in my life that's been stressful, uh, there's been a lot of weird stuff going on. I mean, of course, we like to look at the reflections outside with the weather and, and what's going on in that aspect, but there's so many other things that I think uh, that are going on deep inside of ourselves. You know, I think that the weather patterns and the things that are happening externally are just reflections deeply of what's going on inside of all of ourselves, the collective consciousness. You know, I've been a big advocate of the collective consciousness for years now. And a lot of people are trying to pinpoint, okay, well, what's the reason why? Like, what astrologically? Is there some big thing? Is it because of this eclipse? Is it become a, because of this? Is it because of that? It's because of all of it. And we're going to talk about that today. And, you know, try and, um, try and get some real clarity on all of it all together. Because, you know, at the end of the day, there's so many things to look at. There's so many things going on. And that's what I really want to kind of drive home today, per se. So why don't we just jump right into it? Because I actually don't have a lot of time today, but I'm going to give you guys as much as I can give. I got an angel game to go to tonight, and they better win. <laughs> okay, so here is Wednesday, tomorrow. All right? I'm doing tomorrow because this is, a, this is like my main chart of the week because it helps me show everything that's going on. One, the sun in Virgo is about to square Saturn. We're feeling it now. You're feeling it in your life. What is this square all about? Okay. 21 Sag, 21 Virgo. Well, this square to me is about, of course, major decisions. Now, when you come to major decisions in one's life, they're very difficult especially when you feel like you want more time to figure him out. This moon in Gemini has been opposing Saturn. It's been squaring Neptune. And it started with a square to Mercury and Mars, which, by the way, these two guys are going to be hanging out with each other for the next week. Not the best fun party, let me tell you. Aggression, fights, criticisms, you know, bombastic attitudes, things coming out of nowhere, fights, you know, these are not uh, truce, criticisms, deep truce that come from your ego, that come from what you want and what you don't like and what you want. And so it's, woo, oh boy, oh boy, when I say woo, it is woo. This is like uh, people going, did I make the right choice in my life? You know, because this is what the sun in Virgo is all about, is trying to figure out, it's the end of summer, it's the end of a season. It's the harvest time. Did I harvest the right crop? Is this what I really like in my life? And a lot of it is based upon Saturn in Sagittarius. The journey, the outlook, where you're going. Do you feel trapped? Do you feel like that your reality is exactly in the positive place that you want to go? Is your heart truly happy? Look at this week. We're going to have... Let's get this rid of this here. The North Node and Venus conjunct. Your true happiness, your true relationships, your true values on top of the North Node. Are you truly happy? And this Mars in Virgo with Mercury direct covering the shadow period of the Mercury retrograde. Remember that. So there's a lot of gunk here over the last five weeks that's being covered that is truthfully coming out and truthfully, honestly trying to be understood. 
Emotions are very high on the table because the moon this week is coming into Cancer. We're to oppose Pluto, where it's going to square Jupiter and square Uranus. And this is going to tap into this week, this Jupiter-Uranus opposition, which is beginning and which is at the forefront of what's going on. Is the roads, is the journey exactly what you want? Are the connections, are these areas in your life that really make you feel good? And I think that this is a very, very serious choice that we all wish we had more time to make or we're hoping that we can push off longer, but we can't. This is the month. September's the month. You know, October, what, what's going down? Well, Jupiter's coming into Scorpio where it's not going to deal with bullshit anymore. No, 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 no. Libra can deal with bullshit. It'll be like, well, I can see it from both sides, right? Jupiter and Scorpio is like, no, I can't see it from both sides. I can only see it for what I like and what I don't like. Well, a lot of that is starting to come into fruition now. The fear of making a change towards lessons that you've learned. You know, I think that this Saturn in Sagittarius is teaching us it's okay to learn things. You're not a failure when you learn. I think that's a huge spiritual lesson going around right now. You are not a failure if you learned. Failures are not failures. Failures are lessons to show you where you can go, where you want to go, and the kind of reality that you want and can have. And that's a lot of what is coming up right now in the astrology. Because honestly, in my opinion, you've got to also remember as in the next week, the sun's going to oppose Chiron as well. And it's in a zone right now that is not very simple. Major decisions to be had major choices on whether or not you feel like it's the right place to go in your life, right? On top of that, Jupiter opposing Uranus. Do you feel like you are truly going on the journey of your life that feels harmonious based upon the things that you are becoming of self? I think that a lot of this is that you are deciding the life that you want. And there's a lot of power with that. And there's a lot of free will with that. But is those free will choices leading towards the road that you really feel like it should go? This is a massive week of growing pains. And the growing pains come from learning to change your reality. Instead of, and now this is where I think a lot of this comes in is with this south node hanging in Aquarius. It's like, nah, I mean, I want to change, but, and I want to go towards where my heart goes, but I want to do what maybe everyone else would do. Or I want to do what will not compromise everybody and keep everybody good. This is the whole Libra, Aquarius, Jupiter, south node, aspect happening right now. It's like, I would rather keep things content, even if they're not going correctly, instead of taking the courage and the strength that this Mars Mercury is realizing, the Sun in Virgo is realizing, the big transit of Uranus and Saturn in Fire signs with Venus making its trying to Saturn this week of, okay, the balls to go or the ovaries, sorry, ladies, of where to go and what you can do with what you really want to do. Or are you going to try and hold on to and be content with what you're not really wanting in your life? Like, this is forcing you to make a major choice right away. There's no time left. I'm, the best way to describe this is like, I'm sorry, but there's no time left. I know you want more time to sort out if you should do this or if you shouldn't do this 
or if you can continue to keep trying to understand situations that you already know deep down in yourself have issues and need to be decided on and worked out upon. And this is the problem in the Zodiac right now is that people have to own and grow up and make some fixes and choices. And so one of the choices I think can be, sure, let's try to fix whatever the issue is in your life, whether it's work, business, a personal issue, a home issue, a family issue, wherever it might lay in your own reality. But the issue here is continuing to keep it at the pace or to continue to keep it incubated in this area of your life and just hope that somehow some miracle is going to change it all. Some miracle is going to create a completely different story for you. Some miracle is just, Virgo miracles don't happen. You know why? It rules the wheat. Why do you think the Virgo is the wheat bearer? Okay, and, it, and, and she holds the wheat. It is what has harvested. You cannot change what has harvested. You can change it by cutting it out and turning it into wheat or turning it in. It's like taking ap oranges and making orange juice. That's what Virgo is about. It, it, but you can't change the orange, but you can make it orange juice. That's what you can do. So this is what you're learning in your life. Taking the situation you have and trying to change it into something else that you might like. Hopefully. And if it turns out into a direction to where you don't like orange juice and you got oranges, well, maybe then maybe you should try to make orange Juliuses or maybe you should try and make orange 50-50 bars. But at the end of the day, if you just don't freaking like orange by the time October comes and Jupiter comes into Scorpio, then orange is not the new black, yo. And I'm sorry, that show and that life and your energy of orange is over. You know, and a lot of people don't like Trump and people, the Trump's orange. So, you know what, at the end of the day, I don't think there's a lot of people like an orange right now. So I think that people are kind of having to see, like, you can try as much as you can to change the orange into or change whatever you have in your life into trying different aspects to turn it into different things. But at the end of the day, like, if you don't like the main thing that you harvested here, and you keep trying to change it. It's kind of like a, um, I don't know why I'm getting like, you know, it's kind of like somebody who doesn't like their body, right? It's like, okay, so I'm going to like do a bunch of plastic surgery on myself, which I have nothing against. But you know, at the end of the day, no matter how much of that plastic surgery you might do, that doesn't, and it might build up confidence in certain areas, there still is something deeply underneath that you are not satisfied with yourself at some point about it. And that that part of yourself you will have to constantly deal with and that there is always going to be something that you are definitely not satisfied with always. So, you know, this astrology is bringing up big, big, big issues. Jupiter opposing Uranus for the next couple of weeks, getting exact near the end of the month. At the same token, Pluto is stopped, okay, right? So Pluto stopped, and Pluto comes direct on September 28th as well, okay? And so this is this moment here from September 28th to October 10th when Jupiter comes in Scorpio, right? That major change is hanging on the fence. Now I'm going to take you to some extreme past, Okay, I'm gonna take you deep, 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 deep into the past. Not that deep, let's just go five years away. Let's just go five years ago. Five years ago, during this time, we were at the end of Saturn in Libra. You guys all remember? Do you remember where you were at in September of 2012 and the change over into October of 2012? Do you guys remember that gnarly, weird hump of a road? Jupiter is about to explode with an opposition to you from Uranus. So, okay, the spot that we went through 
from September of 2012 through October of 2012, that little area there that was a major, major wall to crawl over, okay, is exactly where the Jupiter opposition of Uranus is going to happen and Jupiter is going to cover and amplify because Jupiter has not been here to show us the great guru. What the hell was that craziness about? What was that craziness about? What was that fear? What was that crazy crap we dealt with in September and October of 2012? What was that moment that just made us go, what the fuck? We're about to find out. We're also, at the same token, about to go right back to that energy and understand what the hell went on, which all of us would try anything in our world to avoid. But guess what? There ain't no avoiding it, and that's why this is so extreme, is the collective consciousness is bracing itself bracing itself for the beginnings of understanding what the fuck happened five years ago exactly to the mother effing date. Yes, I cussed. I'm real. Hang me by a noose because I'm cussing on freaking live stream. But when I get intense and when I get real, I get real. So... You want to know what's coming up and why the world's going crazy and why people, I mean, you can point it at eclipse. You can point it at sun square Saturn. You can point it at Venus on the North node this week. You can point it on Mercury on Mars. You can point it at the moon switching over into cancer and about to go through hell after it already went through hell in Gemini. You can count on a million things. Pluto ready to come direct. Jupiter coming into Scorpio. But the main one, the main one of all of it is... Jupiter is crossing over where we were and covering all the energy. Okay, remember, because Jupiter just got out of shadow. Okay, right? Jupiter went retrograde at 23 degrees Libra. So now Jupiter has just entered into the new zone. And this is zones that Jupiter hasn't been in itself for 12 years. But as Jupiter's coming to this zone, the last time it was here, Saturn had never gone through here for years, right? Since the 80s. So it's like Jupiter now is coming through and going, what the hell is in here? Oh my gosh, Saturn just def demolished this place. Just demolished it. I got to try and understand what the hell happened here. There, it's like if you were to walk into a town and see it destroyed, and there's just vampires everywhere, and blood, and zombies, and what the heck happened here? And there's a fear, because over the wall of Libra is Scorpio, right? And this is the end of one half of the zodiac. That's why Libra is the balance beam, right? It's the balance between the dark and the light. It's the balance between the day and the night. It's the balance between one half of the zodiac and the other. It's the one half between your head and your feet because at Libra are the two kidneys. And now the sun, when it travels to Libra, of course, we go into fall, which is coming up. At the same time that Jupiter is crossing into the darkness of Scorpio deep into the underworld and is going to highlight and uncover some extremely dark and intense, very difficult energies that we went through all the way at the beginning of, well, let, let's, let, let, let's have some fun. Let, let's have some fun. Um, so, because I've got about eight minutes left. So, edit chart. Let's go... Uh, 2012. All right, perfect. Okay. Oh, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't do it. You didn't do it, did you? 2012. Oh. Okay, I did it. So look at that. 
So on September 13th of 2012, we had Saturn at 27 degrees of Libra. Now watch this every day that happened. Now it's going to be a kind of ironic that the Jupiter Uranus square is going to be happening at this degree mark. Okay. So I'm sure you need to look at your life at you were, as you were getting prepared for the weirdness that happened during these last weeks, because when we were at the end of September, September 29th and 28th, when we're going to have this Jupiter opposition to Uranus is when Saturn was at these last degrees. And then look at October 6th. I'll never forget the date. We had Saturn enter of uh, Scorpio. And this really freaked people out. Um, it really brought us deep into some really deep waters. And I think if, if anybody in their life can ever prove that astrology is, was, is real, there's a, like two events. One, when Uranus went into Aries and we had the uh, uh, big earthquake in Japan at uh, Fukushima, the day that Uranus entered Aries. Two, October 6, 2012, when Saturn entered Scorpio. If that doesn't prove astrology, you know, I don't know what is. Now, what's ironic about this and, and, and what's even more mind-bending of all these things going on and all these events that are extremely correlated to this last five years and finishing these last five years is if you truly think about Libra and the dualistic ma manner and if you really think about this aspect that's coming, it's almost like you are in exactly the opposite waters of where you were during that time. So if you were in a relationship, maybe you were single. If you were poor, maybe now you're rich. Things like that. It's all flipped. But how are you going to deal with this energy as it comes in this way? Kind of a weird way to think about it all. Um, I've, been, I've been pondering this one for a little bit. Um, and you know, this is what people need to be aware of for the next couple weeks, like, um, the, up until October 10th, because it is after October 10th, we truly move into the next phase of reality. And the Jupiter Uranus opposition will be done. Jupiter will come into Scorpio. And then on top of that, when you actually think about October through December 19th, when Saturn comes into Capricorn, that is the preparations for Saturn and Capricorn. That is also the preparations of Saturn finishing through Sagittarius direct and coming through the galactic center point and a major last, like that's why I'm calling it last call is October through December. And that's why I'm doing my event honestly, on November 3rd through 6th, because I want to help as many people and talk to people's guides in my live. And I'm doing it in a full hotel. I will be doing readings for people on Sunday, Saturday, a full presentation going over this and getting people prepared for the biggest transit of our lives, which is a one in every 800 to 1,000 year transit of Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter conjunct. And we're, I mean, and have you guys even looked at 2018 yet? Mars and Venus retrograde in the same year that never happens in 2018. I mean, there's some major, major, major crap coming on. And it's all about to hit here October 10th. So I think, you know, it's so funny that people think it's September 23rd. Like, it's like, what's happening September 23rd? It just, you know, it, it's, it's. It's, it's deeper than that crap. It's way deeper. This goes back to five years ago. This is not this random event that just happens on September 23rd that just so happens to be some biblical prophecy. This is way beyond that. This is, beyond, this is about spiritual consciousness and evolution of human consciousness and evolution of you getting through the last five years, which was the craziest five years of your life. You've got to remember that there was a Pluto-Uranus square in the middle of those five years. And guess what? P Jupiter and Uranus are about to oppose. 
and try and help understand how to deal with this crazy, neurotic, wild energy that shifted your perception of reality and life and your goals and your persona and where you're going and who you are and the life that you live in and the reality that's in front of you. This is way deeper than just some biblical prophecy on September 23rd because when this is aligned and then this is aligned. No, this goes back to years and years and years and years and years of alignments that are finally all finally coming to a culmination and understanding point. Not just some little stupid little thing that somebody put up on the internet that is going to try and get some people some views. Well, I've been talking about this. All, of you, all the astrologers, I'm not going to say me, all the astrologers have been talking about this for five years. Not September 23rd. Sorry, that's not the event that the astrologers have been talking about. Astrologers have been talking about the five-year cycle that has been going on and the five-year cycle that is coming to its fruition and peak point and are you, what, which choice are you going to make here? And the last call is October through December. That's when the pressure will be m multiplied and we are stepping into water and earth signs with Jupiter and Saturn. We are moving out of fire and air. We are moving into earth and water where it becomes muddy and concrete and official. This has been a flexible time. This is not a stable time. Stable times are coming, but the choices you make over this next cycle are very crucial. And this week, a lot of those choices, maybe it's not so much of that you make the choice as much as you know deep in your heart what the choice you're going to have to make months from now will be. That you are going to confront this week Wednesday through Friday. Especially with this Mercury-Mars conjunction in Virgo. The truth, the understanding of the truth. So, you know, it's almost like you are finally seeing and you know and there is, there is massive clarity right now. The issue is that people think they're confused, that people think that they are, don't know what to do. You know exactly the choice that you need to make here coming up in the next couple months. You know exactly what you must do to go in the place that you need to go. This sun square Saturn is no bullshit, especially when it's done in mutable signs. And this is like the big test of the mutability in the zodiac as Jupiter is going to come into fixed energy in a water sign and Saturn's going to come into a cardinal sign in Capricorn in the next couple months. This last call is coming October through December. But September is about understanding the craziness that happened from September of 2012 through October of 2012 as Jupiter will cover this area in Libra where Jupiter was, I mean Saturn was then and it went into Scorpio and freaked the world out on October 6th. And that moment in your life is going to be revealed to you and understood and you are going to have to learn, become more positive and heal that placement that has not been healed deep in your soul fully yet. I don't know how much more clear I can get for people. <laughs> so. And so somebody says, but I'm trapped. You are not trapped. You're trapped in your own complacency of a fear of doing the Leo North Node thing and just balls out doing what the king or the queen or a lion would do and saying, no, this is what I will do. This is where I'm going to go. This is how I will make my life great. This is what will make me happy. This will not. You are trapped in your fear of not doing what you want to do in your life. This is not, I am trapped. This is your own trap. You know, it's like we get stuck in so many situations when we don't even realize that we have the key. And where is the key? The key is in Chiron. And the key is at 26 of Pisces. And the key is learning it's okay to surrender and let go 
of things that don't work out. Saturn's going to hit this space this fall. That ain't over. Saturn will face the key maker of Chiron and give you the key in or out of this trap, as you might call it, by expanding and taking an adventure towards a more beautiful manifesting place. The North Node is going to trine Saturn over these next couple months or this month. Anyway, I got to run. There's so much going on. I got so many things. I'm going to be late. I gave you guys my best for this week. I all like the, the main thing that I ask people for and the only thing that I ask people for is to please help share these videos to get this information out to everybody because no, I, you know, I don't see anybody talking about it. And so, you know, it's like everybody's so caught up in the September 23rd bullshit. I'm going to be honest with you. Everybody's so caught up in like it, blaming it on the eclipse, blaming it on all these other things. It's so much deeper connected with this Jupiter-Saturn stuff. You're always going to notice that Jupiter-Saturn stuff is so powerful. And you're always going to have to know how to look back to the past and what transits happened years ago. And how when transits of planets, especially with Jupiter and Saturn, come back to cover those spaces. And that will make you a master astrologer. And that will help you understand what's going on in the reality completely. There are, of course, so many other things that we could talk about. But, you know, there's so many things that can be truly found right now in this aspect. Complacency, holding on to things, worrying about what other people think, worrying about what other people are going to do is going to be your number one trap. Do you have the courage to be you? Do you have the courage to go where you want to go? Do you have the courage to live the life you really want to live? Or are you going to live in that trap of, well, I can't do that because of all these little things that add up to this big trap? We'll see. Good news is, though, at the end of the day, we do have a last call, like, an, like at a bar. I don't drink anymore, but like at a bar, there is a last call. And when it comes, I know people will make the right choice. If you want to be there live, please come. November 3rd through the 6th, LAX Hilton, Los Angeles. It's cheap flight to LA. It's so cheap. We have even cheaper tickets. It's so cheap, even if you want to come for the one day. Or if you want to stay for the three days, it's so inexpensive. And we're doing payment plans. Go to leokingevents.com. Let's do it. I'm out. I will see you all later. Sending you my best straight from Orange County, California. And hoping that you guys have a wonderful week. I will see you guys later. If you're on the Leo King app, I'll see you every day. The Leo King app is the world's first and leading video and notification astrology horoscope app for iPhone, Android, and computer. Get daily spiritual videos and addictingly accurate notifications alongside weekly sun sign horoscopes, tarot videos, and exciting new age entertainment videos by celebrity astrologer and TV personality David Palmer, the Leo King. Join today. You have nothing to lose with a seven-day free trial and wake up to astrology like you've never seen before. Wake up to astrology like you've never seen before.